Hi, I'm Tom, author of Botanica Drama, and uh, you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. On this episode, I chat with Tom about Botanica Drama from Pow Pow Press. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, YouTube Podcasts, and YouTube Video. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Tom is a cartoonist born in Montreal with a master's degree from the University of Quebec. He's been drawing comics since an early age, and many of his characters have been following him around for years. Botanica Drama, his third book, is a sequel of sorts to Casa de Rodeo, which is a sequel to VII, which won the Real Filion Award for Best Debut in 2018. The story of Botanica Drama goes like this. After rising day after day for billions of years, the sun, recovering from a bit too much celestial partying the night before, makes a fateful decision to stay in bed. With the earth plunged into darkness, everyone from Philomene, the flower, to death itself face dire consequences, trapped in an everlasting winter and surrounded by mysterious creatures that have emerged from the shadows. Can anything make the sun shine again? So without further ado, here's my chat with Tom about Botanica Drama from Pow Pow Press. So Tom, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Thank you very much uh, to you. I appreciate your time. Before we get started with all the questions, I would like to know, what are you reading today? What's on your bedside reading table? <laughs> uh, well, actually, this is, uh, I'm, I'm in, a, in a phase of rereading old classics. And, uh, well, old classics for me, I'm rereading right now uh, Hayao Miyazaki's uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. It's been a very faithful book for me uh, during troubling times, actually. Well, not not that these times are troubling times, but uh, there was a time where that book was very important for me. And I don't know, it's been a while since I read it. And uh, I'm revisiting, revisiting old grounds with this book. That's good. W- were you able to see that uh, Oscar-winning movie, uh, Boy and the Heron? Yes, yes, oh, I yeah. did. That was tremendous, eh? <laughs> it was. I, I, th- I don't know yet, but I, I think it's one of my favorite of his. Oh, really? Oh my! Yeah, I better think so. than Spirited Away. Well, it's not. I, I can't say it's better, but okay. I, I, it's it's not that. Well, it's not that it's worse. It's okay. it's just completely different for me. I love them both, but right, I, I right. think this one maybe maybe it's because it's the most recent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this one. It's just, it hits home on so many level. There are so many scenes that resonated with me a lot. Good. So we're talking today because you have a new book available for sale called Botanica Drama. I wonder if you could talk a wee bit about it. What's it all about? So it's the story about uh, a small little village in uh, in a valley that lives uh, through a, uh, a bit of a catastrophe, a crisis, when the sun decides that it doesn't want to get up anymore, it doesn't want to get up the next morning because of his last night uh, uh, heavy drinking, uh, going hard on a party. He's uh, completely wiped out the next morning and doesn't want to get up. So the world is plunged into darkness and the people of the village and uh, other parts of the world are paying the price of his um, his partying, the two main characters are uh, a little flower called uh, Philomène and uh, her best friend uh, Death, the Grim <laughs> Reaper. Right. And uh, the two of them, with uh, the other villagers, try to live through this uh, this crisis. Yeah, it's a, it's a story that of. Uh, very emotional responses, I think, uh, when I was reading it, that's for sure. The preview copy you sent along, that's uh, definitely had a, a reaction, that's for sure. But I want to ask you, what inspired you to make it? 
Actually, it was a it was a story that I had in the, in the back of my head for for quite a while. When I was young, I used to like shoot uh, stories like like stories that I would like to do, and one of them was a story about the sun that that can't get up or just disappears. I, I I didn't I didn't think yet of why he would disappear. It was a story that it, that it really resonated with me, but I still didn't know exactly how to how to tell it. And when the pandemic hit, uh, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to to tell that story because it's not it's not a story about the pandemic. It's not a story about that at all. But it's a story about how I felt and how we felt actually during that time. Is it was just a a lot of despair and a lot of uh, anxiety about the future, uh, the, 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 the unknown of the future. And uh, that primarily came from, from this, actually, was the, the, uh, the anxiety and the, 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 well, the depression also that I, that I, that I felt uh, during that time and uh, how, community family and friends were so important in, in, in that time those were the feelings that inspired the most that sorry but it, it was still a very hard book to figure out because i i didn't know what was what was the emotional center of the story but i mean you, you can talk about depression you can talk about anxiety but uh, there was still a bit of a part I was still missing. And uh, one day my, my mother told, well, it made me discover the, the, the poems of Emily Dickinson. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the poem uh, was uh, because I could not stop for death. And she, she recited the poem to me and uh, I wanted to draw it. I wanted to draw that poem, make it a scene in the book, and it became the a bit of the heart of the book, if I can say so, because mm -hmm. it is a story about death, and it's a story about friendship, and it's a story about those friendships that are that keeps you uh, going. Yeah, the, the, those were the big inspirations. Okay. Now, you, you said it was inspired by the pandemic, but I just was wondering, curious, uh, with the sun disappearing, was there any climate change type of thoughts going on to that? Is that completely off topic? No, I mean, it wasn't the, the main topic, but it, it did present itself uh, as I was thinking about the story. So, yeah, yeah, there there is definitely a sort of environmental uh, I don't know the word in in English. A souci, a worry, uh, a worry, mm -hmm. an environmental worry, a, a fear with uh, the 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 sun just leaving. And yeah, you just feel completely abandoned on your own, and uh, what to expect of the environment in that period of time that we are in. I thought it kind of reflected that. We just experienced actually the solar eclipse, so it's very timely. Yeah. So we the sun disappeared, and we all went, "What will happen?" So um, this book might be uh, sort of a, a future a glimpse of what could happen. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, so so reading the book, I got this sort of hint, you know, being a, a Warner Brothers cartoon guy, that uh, you had a bit of an influence maybe from Chuck Jones. Is that true? Oh yeah, 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 completely. I, I was I always had like. Um, Chuck Jones or or just like any Looney Tune cartoon, I w it was on the back, always playing <laughs> when I was doing this comic. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun in that regard. I know you mentioned death and and yeah, the Green, Grim Reapers there, but it's not a uh, in your face type of thing. And you put it in the context of these characters. Uh, that that's mm -hmm. for sure. And and speaking of characters, I've seen these guys before. Is this a continuation of your previous book, Casa Rodeo? Actually, it's more of a, um, in my mind, it does like, it's the, it's a continuation of the lives of these characters, but they're, they're different stories. They do feature the same characters, but uh, they're not a continuation of the events. Okay. Uh, so Casa Radio is, I, I, I kind of tend to think of like, 
like it, this is my third book and I, I tend to think of them like each of them I was just chapters in the in the stories of these characters and ah. other stuff happens in between you just don't see it and this is the latest chapter of their story ah. uh, but it's not very important that you like seek the others uh, but th there are some like clues on why this character is the way that he is though it is not important in the story it's just like for me it's it's more it's more for me right, right. so okay. yeah the, but um yeah so they're, they're independent stories very good very good now as a creator i need to ask you what tools you used to create your book i use ink and i use uh, a pen to uh, to ink I use Bristol paper, and uh, so I, I put everything on uh, on Photoshop, and I clean everything up. But uh, everything is uh, is inked, uh, except like uh, the black spaces. I, I put them on Photoshop just to to make sure that it's all clean and it, it doesn't take also too much ink. <laughs> right. Uh, like, yeah. A lot of time and, and money, I guess too. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 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 Now uh, putting a book out like this, that's out today in bookstores takes a lot of effort, a lot of promotion that goes into that now. So beyond us talking here today, I'm wondering what other plans you have for promotion for the book? Well, uh, I'm going to be at the Toronto Comics Art Festival, uh, the 11th and the 12th of May with uh, Papa Press. And uh, also uh, before that, uh, I'm going to be on the 26th of April at uh, 5. I'm going to do a, a sip and social at, uh, at the, Lib the, the Saga Bookstore in Montreal. So we're going to talk about the book, uh, just meet other other people, uh, other people of the neighborhood or people uh, that want to participate are, are absolutely welcome to That's talk great. about the book. Very good. Yeah. And, uh, it takes a village, so to speak, to get a book. Of yeah, more. It doesn't, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't just promote itself. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah and uh, later in may also uh i going back to may i'm going to be also at the uh, festival de bd de montreal the comics festival of montreal so uh, i'm going to be that uh, later later in may very good so it sounds like you got a lot on the go and and speaking of that <laughs> i know we're, we're talking about your book here that you know botanica drama but i'm wondering do you have any other projects that are on the go uh, well, uh, not uh, not right now, but I I, I try to work on some uh, some upcoming projects. I, I want to to figure out what they could be if they're going to be. Uh, well, I, I would like to continue to work with this this universe. I I feel like I, I can still explore with it, and I I would like to still explore with it. I am uh, working. On a, a project with a with a writer, it's it's still a working progress. With we're still on uh, the first pages, if you if you, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, but uh, it's uh, there there's stuff coming. Oh, very good. Very <laughs> in, good. A, in a few years, but it's coming. <laughs> Everything in good time. There you go. Yeah. So so as a professional in this comic book field, I've got to ask you, what would be one piece of advice you would pass along to someone who wants to make their own book? What would you say to that person? That's a good question. There, there there's a lot of um, of ideas that you can throw, but I don't know which one are are actually like good advice. It's it's tough to do to make uh, to give good advice. But uh, one thing that really helped me when I was doing my own comics is just to like look at the stuff that you like and read. Uh, like the the TV shows, the movies, the comics, the books, even going to like uh, a museum, you look at paintings in a museum, and if something like hits you, let it come to you. Don't don't try to seek it. Don't try to make it happen. Don't force it. Maybe I'm I'm going on different on different branches right now, but. Uh, I think uh, something that is very important, just just let it come to you. Okay. Inspiration, D don't sure. force it. And what I mean is just just try to look at the most stuff that you can. 
not only like stuff that you like, but still is stuff that it wouldn't even appear like on your radar. Like to go back to the boy and the heron, actually, the first time that I saw it, I, I actually saw it like three times. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really liked it. But but actually, the first time I, I did know what to make of it, I didn't mm. know if I liked it because it was so different. It was so it wasn't like the kind of movie that I was expecting from Miyazaki, actually. And it took me by surprise. And there was a lot of stuff that just hit me like, oh, I, I actually really like this way of, of telling a story or this way of exploring the, like talking about this character and everything. And that movie like made me realize I got to go seek different stuff because it's so, it's, it's really interesting to just go outside of your comfort zone. I really, <laughs> I, I got really like, um, I expanded a bit on that idea, but yeah, yeah, that, that, that would be my advice to just, okay. That's good advice yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Well, with all that you've got going on, and certainly with promotion, I'm wondering where you recommend people go online to find out more about your current and your future projects. So uh, right now I'm most active on Instagram. Uh, so it's uh, Tom, T-H-O-M underscore illustrations. So yeah, that, that would be the best place to, to follow me and see uh, what, uh, what comes next. Very good. Well, Tom, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you'd like to get across in this interview? One last thing that I would, uh, that I would say, uh, to go check out uh, uh, the, also the Instagram and the Facebook page of Pop Out Press. So if you, if you want other news about uh, my own comics and other comics, you can go to, to Pop Out Press. Thanks to Tom for the chat. You can discover more about Tom on Instagram at instagram.com slash T-H-O-M underscore illustrations. And you can check out Botanica Drama on Pow Pow Press. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube Videos. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. You can follow along at True North Country Comics on most social media sites. Remember, you can send any and all feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks for listening and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2024.